Okay, so hopefully I'm big on everyone's screen, or but if not, that's that's just the way it's gonna have to be. But uh, okay, my name is Patrick Hunter. I'm an artist and graphic designer from Red Lake, Ontario, originally. I lived in Sault Ste. Marie for, let's hope I'm not on mute, no. Nope. Uh, I've lived in Sault Ste. Marie for about five years. Uh, I went to college there, met a lot of great people, and then finished, decided to move to Toronto. And now I've, I've been living here the last 10 years, super ready to leave, to come maybe back to Sault Ste. Marie, maybe somewhere else, kind of smaller, clo closer to the lake. Um, but what we're gonna be doing today is just uh, a virtual paint session. And what we're gonna be painting is some feathers that you got in the mail. They're in paper form right now, but this is hopefully the goal. We're all gonna get there together, don't worry. Um, if you haven't painted before, I promise you're gonna end up with something that you, if, if you don't like it, you can give it to your mom or you can give it to your auntie because they have to like everything. So uh, what we're gonna do to get started is we're gonna paint our background. So that is just, that's everything but the feather. And how we get started with that is by putting some, I'm just choosing like like warm colors, but um, you can choose whatever colors you want. Um, choose three. Uh, just for the technique, it kind of makes it easier to do for everyone. Um, and then you want white. So the way that the, the, the transfer paper works, uh, it'll only work if it's on a lighter background. So don't do black, don't do dark blue, don't do dark purple. You can do light purple, light blue, but um, make sure it's it's pretty like like around this light. So there is um there is white carbon paper out there, but for the for our lesson today, we're just gonna use uh the black the black kind right now. And um, all that does is just gonna be able to transfer this design onto our canvas once it's dry. So if everyone wants to just give me a thumbs up when they have all of their colors and white on their palette, I'll show us the next step. So you don't need a whole lot. You just need like a little blob. Uh, Joanne is having... Sorry, here I am. I don't have a palette. You can use a plate. Like that. I'm <laughs> pointing to it. So can I just use like a white plate or something? Yeah, yeah you can use a plate. You know, okay. I think you want it to be able to hold some liquid just in case, but. Um, okay, be right yeah. back. BRB. See you soon. And for this next step, we're just, we're going to be using our bigger brush. Um, just wet it a little bit. You don't have to get it sopping wet, but I just kind of like, I just dip the tip in. Um, and um, if anyone's not painted with acrylic paint before, um, it's kind of like you're painting with plastic. So if you get it on your clothes, it's not going to come out um, unless you're quick about it and like, wash it under water real fast. So hopefully you're wearing something you don't mind getting paint on. Obviously, there's paint all over me. This is my painting shirt. So um, just keep that in mind. Sleeves up if you have a sweater on just in case you would kind of get your elbows in it. Um, so yeah, everyone should have their three colors and white. And what I like to tell people is just like, however you get these three colors on your single brush, it's, it's up to you. But how I do it is just by dipping um, a corner in one color, a corner in the other, kind of like dip it in the middle and then take a scoop of white. So as you can see, it's it's all on there, sort of in different clumps and quantities. Um, however you get it on there, that's up to you. It's If you want to just dip it in, like, like it's a chicken nugget, go right ahead. And you don't have to do it like this is just because I'm showing you. But um, so what you're going to do from there is just drag it across your, your canvas like this. And it just kind of creates like this really cool streaky sort of background. 
And this technique just tricks people into thinking that you knew what you were doing and you're a good painter. So you're just taking it all from side to side, all the way across your canvas. Um, if you're finding that it's not spreading that well, you might just need to add a little bit more water to your brush. Um, add some more paint to your brush as well. And we want full coverage. So you're kind of just painting until you get everything covered. And also what I like to tell people is that you, you paint the sides as well. Um, if you guys end up selling these after, it just makes it easier on your client so they don't have to get it framed. So, um, I mean, in case anyone missed it, um, I'm using my bigger brush. To okay. do Not this one. Um, you can use that one. It would just it just gets it on there faster. So if you're painting a big area, yeah. you wanna, uh, <laughs> you're gonna catch up in no time. Um, if you're painting a big area, you want to like do like use the most efficient means possible. So that would just mean like a bigger brush. Um, but it you know it's what you have at home as well. Um, in case you didn't get the kit, but yeah, we're just pulling it all the way across. Um, sometimes people tend to like paint like this, where they go like that. That's kind of what you don't want to do because it'll it'll end up drying like that if you kind of leave it. So just long, sort of like <laughs> meaningful strokes all the way across, and. Like I said, don't forget to do the sides. I don't want to be more red. And we're making sure that our canvases are nice and light and not super dark. And we do that by just making sure you add some white to your brush. So how I first, I'll, I'll fill these kind of like moments of, of slight silence with like maybe some stories of how I kind of got started as an artist. Um, as I said earlier, I'm from Red Lake, Ontario. It's kind of like slightly ground zero for like where first um, Woodland Arts kind of first started. Um, and it started with this man named um, Mor Norval Morso, and he was painting um, like, you know how like a lot of our traditions are orally passed down he was he was kind of painting them instead and at the time like during the 60s it was it was pretty controversial to do that just because you know that just wasn't done before and like first nations people had not seen it before but neither had the rest of the world either so that's kind of why the the art style really took off was because it was new and you know no one had seen our legends our, our stories kind of depicted that way so I, you know, as most things go, um, whenever there's controversy, there's like, you know, a lot of talk and people wanted his works, but then also wanted them taken down and stuff like that. So um, that's sort of how it all began. And where I grew up in Red Lake, um, I just grew up seeing um, our stories and our artwork like on the walls publicly in, in buildings. So that would be like doctor's offices and, you know, the grocery store all over town. And you know, people were proud that 
all of these works were created there. And as I kind of like moved out and moved into bigger cities, I, I kind of realized that that was like an isolated experience where, you know, our artwork that was celebrated back in Red Lake wasn't necessarily always accepted in public spaces in, in not always Sault Ste. Marie, like Toronto for sure. It's not celebrated enough, I don't think so. Um, the part of what I like to do now is to do these classes and like to help to try and create little artists and uh, just put it into more public spaces. So um, that's sort of how I'm trying to make sure that people know about First Nations artwork and it's fun. I like doing this kind of stuff. Usually all of these things would be done in person, but um, because of COVID, obviously we're doing them online and it's, uh, it's still kind of fun. It's nice to be in the same room as everyone and kind of like laugh and chit chat and have snacks, but um, we got to work with what we got. Uh, okay, so this is kind of how mine's looking. You don't need to layer it on so thick. It doesn't have to be like intensely on there. Um, you just want to make sure you're covering all of the white spots of the canvas. Because when it dries, it it'll kind of show all of that. Um, so now I'm just mine's pretty much finished. I'm just kind of going over it a little bit more. Um, once you have full coverage and it, it's kind of like not dry but not kind of wet, um, if you just wet the tip of your brush a little bit, um, just by like like kind of doing this, just the tip. Um, you can just drag it across lightly across your whole canvas and it'll just blend things just a little bit more and give you a little bit more coverage. And then your background is done. So um, mine's finished. Now it's kind of the boring long part where like we have to wait till it dries. Luckily, everyone's at home, so, uh, and everyone except Reggie um, probably has a blow dryer. So um, you can take your blow dryer to this, get it dried up a little quicker if you want. I just kind of do this while everyone's waiting. And yeah, so this is how you get the background done. And it's not too bad. Just kidding. Um, oh, yours is orange, right, Megan? Awesome. I'm not really sure what it is, but um, it's it's covered. <laughs> looks like a sunset. Yeah. So yeah, you want to take the blow dryer to it and just kind of uh, blow dry it up a little bit. Maybe on the cool setting instead of the hot one, because it'll kind of like, it just does something weird to the canvas. <laughs> you don't want to do that. But yeah, while we're waiting for these to dry, sometimes it's nice doing this on a hot day because you can go like this. Oh, she's ready with hers. So if you're watching this after, um, to the people that are that, that didn't make it on the, the Zoom call, um, everyone's kind of busting out their blow dryers and it's it's pretty cute to see. Um, yeah, so you should have also got seven feathers with your uh, package that Megan had graciously sent you. And 
you can choose whichever one you want. I've done this a couple times, so I've, I think I have four on the go at the moment, which I'll, I'll try and show you right now. There, this, I'm working on like a pride flag with these. So there we go. Hopefully I can do this right. I'll end up making a big, cool uh, pride flag eventually. So I got, I'm doing the red one tonight. But um, as you're, <laughs> what we might get to tonight is sort of getting the black on there, um, doing our, our outline. You don't have to choose black if you don't want. You can choose whatever color you want. I always think that the black pops better. Um, but with all those open spaces, you can fill it after with color in certain spots. And it just kind of makes it that much more nice, cute, adorable. Any of those? So if um, when, you, when you're finished painting your background and, and you're kind of waiting for your crew to finish their drying out their canvas. Um, we don't need the big brush anymore. And um, like I said earlier, I'm not sure if it was recording yet, but acrylic paint is kind of like you're painting with plastic. So um, if you leave your brush with paint on it overnight, it's going to dry and, and not work anymore. Like it's going to get all crusty. So when you're done with it, you just kind of like push it to the bottom and try and get most of the paint off. And then I have paper towel. Look how prepared I am. Um, and you just kind of wipe it off. And that's how you take care of your new brushes that you got. So yeah, don't need that guy anymore. So, yeah, you can even use your pages to fan your painting. Um, you kind of want it to be pretty much 100% dry. Um, the way that carbon paper works, um, it's just like, I guess they used to use it in like photocopiers. I'm not, I'm not that old to know what that was like, but I guess they would like press it down. It, would, it was to make duplicates. When you were typing, you would put between your papers so you could type and make a duplicate of what you were typing. And now Before I photocopiers and this. yeah, that makes sense. So you know, essentially, what we're going to be doing is kind of similar to that. Just yeah. take the carbon paper onto the it's back onto our canvas, and then using a pencil to transfer the design over. But I'll kind of go over that again once we get a little bit closer to that. When everyone's mm -hmm. I tried to him. Okay. Yeah. That's that's how they make copies of documents, I guess, with carbon paper. You just got I a little put some in there. Oh uh black. Oh sorry. <laughs> Quick okay. question. How long does it take? So how long does it take to dry if you don't have a blow dryer? Maybe like 10 minutes tops. So it dries pretty quickly. That's why I kind of like working with uh, acrylic paint more so than watercolor paint. With watercolor, anytime you add water to it, it reactivates the paint. So it kind of will do more things for you after. Whereas acrylic paint, once it's dry, it's, it's pretty, that you could spill something on it. Not that I recommend it, but you could spill something on it and then wipe it off. If it gets dusty because it's on the wall, you can just take a damp cloth to it and wipe it off after too. Like not sopping wet, but like, you know, just um, a little bit damp. So mine's pretty much dry. It's a little tacky, but that's okay. So am I. <laughs> what else can I tell you? So I started this business, this painting business like seven years ago, maybe eight. Um, 
I was working as a line cook at this wonderful place called Gabby's in Toronto and getting burned alive by fryer grease every day. And I was like, I would, but the whole time I was always painting, um, I couldn't find a job as a graphic designer in Toronto because everyone here is a graphic designer. Um, and I was like, well, if I don't have to show up to this job, I could have more time to paint. So then I, I just took on a bunch of commissions at once and like let them pay biweekly or monthly for their, their original paintings. And then that's sort of how the business got started. And then from there, I remembered I was a graphic designer and I was like, oh, so, you know, this feather design that I painted, I can just draw it digitally and then put it onto things like mugs. And, you know, there's, um, hopefully I don't get this in paint. <laughs> there's like hoodies now. And that's kind of how I got going was just like, I hated <laughs> this job that I had. Nothing against like being a line cook, but it just wasn't for me. Um, and I, that's how it's seven years of, I get better every year, trying new things. Um, if there is kind of like an entrepreneur in the room that wants a tip or two, um, do mugs. Everyone's bananas for mugs. They have, you know, tea and coffee. Everyone loves that. They're great gifts. So I've sold thousands of those damn mugs. Um, so if you want to be an entrepreneur, an artist entrepreneur, do mugs first. Skip t-shirts. <laughs> You'll make a lot more money in mugs. All right. So how's everyone's canvas so far? Is it pretty dry? We can give a thumbs up or you can unmute yourself. It looks like Team Gloria is still drying theirs off. Ooh, I like this, the marker job. Is it a sailboat? Can you lift it up higher? Oh, I love it. That makes me want to come back to Sault Ste. Marie and sail. <laughs> Which I will. I'm going to come back this summer. Maybe to the gathering so we can do this in person, which would be a lot of fun. <laughs> All right. So, um, mine's pretty much dry. I'm just going to get one step ahead of y'all a little bit, just so I can kind of, where's the rest? Oh, they right there. Okay, let me do this one. So essentially, the designs you have are going to be like a stencil. Um, you don't have to throw them out after if you don't want. Like I was telling uh, the group uh, that's online with me, earlier um yeah keep these for a rainy day when you want something else to do you have seven of them <laughs> i didn't get one. Oh shucks you didn't no all right there's always one in the group <laughs> i just checked the bag and it's not there so i sent out a couple of emails over the last week um there was an oversight when i was putting people's paint night packages together okay um and the the feathers that were supposed to be printed out and put in the package were missed. I sent a couple emails within the last week, I want to say, um, to confirm with people whether they got the feather in the package or not. Okay, I didn't even check because Sean Kay had this, so. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so um, I, I did send out a couple emails over the last week saying, you know, if you have access to a printer, I, I emailed the PDF for people to print out as well. Yeah. Okay. I'll see if I can get it. Do you have a printer at home? Yes. Perfect. We're in business then. All we have to okay. do is- Okay, uh, don't try. It's not here. Okay. I don't know that up. Yeah, so obviously we're problem solving as we're going along. Um, if, if you don't have any of these uh, feathers, check your email or check your mail. <laughs> I think we mailed them out as well, so. Yeah, I, I sent them in the mail as well, um, but they were sent out, like, I, I want to say a day after the packages were sent out. Um, so if they made it in time, the mail's been funny, especially, like, over the last couple months. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, but if uh, they should be either A in the email or B in the mail. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like she's a printer, so that's perfect. Um, <laughs> I find it weird sometimes when people don't have a printer. Like, just get one. <laughs> They're so handy. Um, anyway. I just want to make sure that everybody else has um, the pictures. Great. Oh, yeah. So if your canvas is dry, what you're going to do um, uh, the really dark side of the carbon paper, it's kind of like you'll it's sooty, like you'll get some on your hands. Um, you want that side down and you're designed to be on the other side. So there's a really dark side and there's a gray side. The gray side is the side that nothing's going to transfer. But um, so, it, yeah. Oh, I'm going to unmute you. What was your question? Oh, I didn't get the um, no? the, the printed out copy. No, thanks. Um, Megan, do you know her email? Just to send it quick. Do you do you have a printer? She does. I have a printer. Yes. I muted myself again. I'm gonna I'm gonna send it again. Okay, I didn't get it. Okay, I'll I'll send it again. Okay, thank you. Oh, yeah. good. This look like it. Hmm. Does it look like it? Mm -hmm. Once you, uh, if you're at this step, you just want to tape it to the other side of your design, and then you take mine on. Whatever you want huh? to. You take mine on. No. However, which orientation you want to put it on there, like it can only go like portrait style, but you know, decide which way you want it to go. Um, you want to tape it down, just because you might move your your stencil and and then you'll end up with like double lines and it's it's not a fun scene so i just tape mine down like so nothing crazy but just enough to kind of keep not enough to keep it there but um one thing too when you start to transfer your design is it's helpful to just do a test first, just to see if your design is actually transferring. And it's kind of, it's pretty light. In some cases, you know, it depends on how hard you press, but um, it'll, it'll be there. So a little bit lighter, but um, yeah, you wanna, it's just there to kind of guide you as you paint along. But um, anyway, I'm showing you the whole thing. Uh, you're just kind of, taping it on there, just enough to keep it there. And then once you want to get started, like I said, like you don't have to do it like this, I'm just showing you. Um, you're just going over all of the outlines and then you're also doing the spots in the middle too. So, and if you want, you can put, you can do the word, uh, the grandfather teaching on the side. Um, if you just want a feather, that's totally cool too. It's up to you. But yeah, you're going over all of the, the outlines of the design. And as I was saying, kind of pull it back a little bit off just one corner, just so you can test and see how hard you need to press. Cause you don't need to press super hard, but you, you don't want to press super light. Cause I've definitely had people in my classes where they were like lightly pressing it. Yes, you've got it right on. 
So you know what you're doing with the carbon paper, um, taping it, in, it to the back of, of this thing and then taping it to your canvas and just going over all of the edges and then all of the insides as well. Um, get it, making sure you get all of the detail in there. And I find like with this carbon paper magic, it just kind of takes the edge off for some people when they do artwork get really anxious and they're like, oh, I can't do that. Like kind of already defeated before they even start. So with this process, it kind of just takes the edge off a little bit. And for people that aren't artistic, it gives them a chance to like gain some artistic confidence. And um, I like everyone to leave my workshops feeling pretty good about what they made. So. That's sort of why I like to do it this way. But um, when I was first starting these workshops, uh, not virtually, but in person, I would um, make people draw everything out, their idea. And then I think I think we had, there was a photocopier at least, so we like blew it up a little bigger. Um, but then they like, I couldn't figure out how to get it transferred. And this one lady who was in my class, she's like, well, why don't we just use carbon paper? I have some in my bag. And I was like, <laughs> I was shocked and I was not even aware of what it was. So ever since then, it's been like my go-to for um, these classes. So you also don't have to like touch the edge of the black um, in the, the printout. If you want to make it a little bigger, it'll just make it a little easier on you later when you're painting because um, the design is just a little thicker, but um, it's, it's up to you. I'm always afraid when I'm doing this that I have like a double chin happening and I'm like, oh, I need to, need to figure out a different way to do this. <laughs> I have like an at-risk chin happening. Don't forget the little dots. There's a fun little technique. I'll show you guys later to get the perfect dot. <clears throat> if you don't have pencils at home, a pen works as well. Probably a little better. <laughs> I just have like a bunch of pencils, so I use them all the time. A little pencil bias over here. Okay, I think I did it all. Make sure. Actually, I'll do the big reveal for you guys. Ta-da! So it just kind of transfers it all over nice and neat so I don't have to try and freestyle it. Um, I mean, I can teach people how to do a feather on the fly if they really wanted to, but luckily um, everyone had a printer at home.
just so everyone's aware, there will be some like a little bit of uh oh. It said my internet was unstable. Hopefully I'm fine now. Um there's like okay, this freaking ring light is so bright. <laughs> but there's a so there's you can see there's a little bit of residue left over from the carbon paper because I have heavy hands, they're huge. Um, so they kind of they, when they rest them on the the page um, with the carbon paper on it, it kind of transfers over where my hand was a little bit. Don't worry about that. Once we have um, once we have our design painted on there, like I said earlier, it's kind of like plastic. So you can kind of take a wet wet cloth to it and wipe all that residue off and um, it'll look good as new. So don't worry if, if you find that there's a little bit of transfer from where your hand was resting on your canvas, um, it'll come off. And also um, you wanna save your carbon paper too because it comes in handy, whether you are using it to paint or if you, you know trying to transfer designs onto quilts or something or t-shirts. Um, I, I've had the, <laughs> had this like ratty old envelope of it for like a couple years. So it, it stands up. All right, next thing's next. Once this is done. I'm not gonna get into it right now. I'm just giving you a heads up of what is coming next. Um, it looks so it's transferred right looks good i think so yeah it's light but it's there yeah yeah it's just kind of be just there as a guide yeah. you're going to be kind of zeroed in painting it as you're kind of going along so um, yeah. it'll reveal itself a lot more once you start to add the Definitely um, for folks at home watching this later, you want to make sure you do a little test just to make sure uh, so you know how hard you need to press down um, so it kind of creates a, a cleaner transfer. I'm trying to find this one piece of paper. So what we'll move into just after this, once I get a thumbs up that everyone's finished transferring their uh, design, um, I'm going to do some just a, a painting tutorial on how to use kind of the, the smaller, more detailed brush. Some tips, tips and tricks. You're not done. No, I still gotta paint it. Ooh, I see it. I'm not sure how um like live streams work for this, like if it's just recording me or if it's recording everyone, but um yeah, but that is the that's the the the, the sorry, that's the brush you want, is what I'm trying to say. Looks good. But um, on one of the screens, uh, a couple of the ladies have a, a, what's it, like a canvas holder? I don't know what that is, like an easel, sorry. I'm in the business, I don't even know the words. Um, I need to get one of those. I've never painted like that. I've always just kind of like painted like on my lap or like on a table. You guys look very professional over there, quite jealous. An artist. She didn't get me when I'm coming. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, they're little, so you can you just hold it if you want. But yeah, it does it does make you look a lot more professional when you have an easel in front of you and you're like doing this kind of stuff. Yeah, I just usually have it's just on a couple pillows in my bed because <laughs> uh, when I. I don't normally paint like this where we're doing, um, you know, from start to finish a painting. It, usually it takes like a, a week or two or that's if I'm going like every single day at it. Um, but there's definitely pieces that I've done before where I, I take a couple of weeks off, come back to it. There's
they're usually big. Um, so, you know, six to eight hours on a, on a piece. Um, I'm watching a show while I'm doing it, doing it in bed. Let's see. Oh yeah, you can see it, right? I can kind of see it on the screen. Great. So while we're kind of just waiting for folks to get their designs put onto their canvas, um, as I said earlier, if you haven't cleaned up your big brush yet, you can take this opportunity to do that. Get some more water, get some coffee, get some tea, whatever you're into. Um, we'll just be a few more minutes before we start the next phase of this workshop. Um, what else was I going to say? Also, um, we're not going to be using the carbon paper in the design anymore. So you can kind of pull those apart, um, put the carbon paper away nicely so you can use it next time. And for those of you that have already done all that, your keeners, oh, looks good. I'm excited. Um, so if you're done all those steps, you can actually get your black paint and put a little dollop onto your, your uh, palette, add a little bit of water to it. That just makes sure it's activated and spreads easier. And with acrylic paint, you don't really need a lot. It, like a little goes a long way. This is probably like too much, but um, it's you don't it you don't need a whole bunch, so you don't have to just like go ham on it if you don't want. Um, another thing too, you can save this paint. Um, I what I do is just kind of like a with a paper towel like wet it a bunch, and usually I don't use the middle, but you would put the um, paper towel in the middle and then saran wrap over it and it just kind of keeps moist the moisture in there so that your paint stays not dry <laughs> essentially so um, you can save the paint if you want but it's all good if you don't all right now move this thing Um, thumbs up if everyone's transferred. We're good? Okay, cool. So um, choose whatever color you want to put on to do your feather with. Um, I'm doing black. Uh, this is kind of what it looks like when your black feather is on your bright colored background. Um, we may or may not have enough time to add color into the little pockets. So um, if we don't get there tonight, you can totally just keep going and kind of add color if you want. But um, that's sort of what it looks like without the color and with. So they both look great. Um, depends what you want to do. Um, so anyway, if we're all kind of caught up, I'll just do a quick little demo with the uh, smaller brush just because uh, you know, first time painting, you gotta not really, probably not sure what you're doing. Um, okay, so with the little, with the little, littler brush, um, adding a little bit of water to your paint just to activate it and kind of, you don't want it runny, but you want it like smooth and like, I don't know. I don't know what texture that would be like mustard maybe i don't know like it, it spreads but it's not <laughs> i think there's something blocking your mic so i'm adding just okay that's all right I'm water, adding more water to uh, the black. Um, to start off, this is what I don't want to see. And what you don't want to do is when you have that kind of clumpy brush. I've seen people do it and that's how they want to start painting, like a design that's pretty intricate. If, it, if you have a clumpy brush, 
that's how it's going to go on. It's clumpy. So how you combat that is, um, is by taking your clumpy old brush um, to the Gloria's. I think that's too big. You want the smaller one, like about the size that I have. Uh, if they're smaller, let's do smaller. If there's not, Yep. Um, headphones, Joanne, you got the right one. Uh, yep, that's probably the one you want, Meg. Yep, that's the one. Um, yeah, I don't even have anything to compare it to, but uh, it's it's pretty, like, honestly, uh, this is my iPhone. This is the, how big the brush is in relation to that. So it's quite, it's just for scale. Um, it's pretty small, but I mean, the detail of the feathers is, is kind of intense. So you want to have like a sharper, smaller brush. Um, anyway, so as I was saying earlier, um, and I'll go through this again, but just for the people that are kind of ahead, um, how you get rid of your clumpy brush is just by twisting it along the edge of your palette like that. And it just kind of creates a way sharper, um, a way sharper tip. And that's what you want to do to get a lot of these smaller details. Um, so you want to make sure you, make sure you do that. That's key. Um, second, um, the way that this brush works is that if you press really lightly, you're going to get um, a thinner line. And then if you press down harder, it expands the brush and it makes a thicker line. So keep that in mind when you're painting because there's thick and thin parts to this feather. And uh, so start out by painting, start out light first. Um, I think it's easier to start by, uh, instead of going like this, where I've seen people do it, they go like that. Try to make it a little smoother. It'll just kind of like make sure the paint goes on a little bit easier um, and like a little bit cleaner as well. But um, yeah, so I'll do it again. I'm just pressing, I sharpen my pencil, I mean pencil, my paintbrush. I am pressing lightly and then pressing down a little harder. And maybe you have a spare sheet or even using your, um, using your stencil, just like, if you haven't painted before, I would recommend just trying a little a little bit just to sort of get the hang of the thick and thin you know max pressure and light pressure part of it um i'm just adding some more water to my little reservoir sharpening my sharpening the tip and then so I'm one of those people that always asks, are we there yet? Like, are we there? When are we getting there? Um, so in saying that, the way that I paint, I try to go as uh, efficient as possible. And what I've found over the years that it makes me feel like I'm getting it done faster. If I just start at the top and do the stem, just all the way down. Obviously I'm I'm running out of paint towards the end of my brush, so it gets a little bit dry. I'm just going to add some more paint to my brush. A little bit of water, a little bit more paint, sharpening my brush, and then continuing on with the line all the way down. It's like a psychological thing. Um, just makes me feel like I'm getting this, this painting done a little quicker, just by painting it all down the center. And then also, once you have your stem finished then i i you can do it upside down you can go you know from top to bottom or bottom to top um it's just because i'm doing this for you online and upside down um i was just start at the top but uh from there you're just kind of matching all of the little spokes of the feather will meet up in the middle and it just sort of makes it feel like you're going that much quicker. So I've started to 
paint started at least. And um, another thing with canvas with uh, painting acrylic, um, you're definitely going to want to do like two coats of black if you're using black or, or any color that you're using. Um, these are going to look pretty rough. I'm not going to lie. The first coat, it, it might look a little jagged, a little like not, um, the paint might be uneven in some spots, but the second coat just really makes everything sharper and pop. And it goes, it, it's a lot quicker too, because there's already like a road for the paint, for the paint to follow. So don't get discouraged if you do the first coat and you're like, this is not looking good. Um, I promise you the second coat will just like, oh, okay, it looks, it looks great. This, I can give this to my mom. Oh, shucks. Spilt paint on my lap. So this is definitely the part where you want to take your time and not go crazy through it. Um, usually about this time in the workshop. If I'm doing them in person, it gets really quiet. Everyone's kind of zoned out doing their thing. It's really nice actually, um, just to see everyone kind of in a meditative sort of state, just kind of enjoying what they're doing. And honestly, like I'm a pretty chill guy. And I think painting is kind of why I am that way is because I, I really take time to I don't necessarily meditate like in the way that like um like that like painting and drawing and stuff like that like zoning out and focusing on a certain thing um that's that's kind of how I've I guess remained quite chill um so yeah I think if I'm ever feeling like sad or mad or angry um you know everyone kind of um uh, does emotion differently like a, I need to walk first, and then I'll come back and like, okay, like let's bring out the paints and let's get zen and sort of chill out a little bit. So I used to think it was kind of cheesy to say that, um, you know, painting has like a healing meditative quality to it, but it does, <laughs> it really does. Um, if you can hear a uh, fire crackling, it's because I have this like fireplace channel on. Um, I did a, one of these workshops once where uh, it was like by by a river and there was like birds chirping. And then my participants were like, do you have birds or something? Like that's all we can hear. And I was like, oh shit, sorry guys. But yeah, there's a little fire on my TV. And you can just find those on YouTube. I didn't realize that there's like that plentiful, but there's like, you type in like fire in the mountains and I just have it on the TV and it, it's, it kind of, you know, creates the atmosphere for a good time. Oh, 
whatever. What else can I tell you guys? Oh, little hot tip for you. Um, if you, to get the perfect dot, you can kind of dip your brush, the back of your brush into your paint and then just dot it where there's a dot and kind of swish it around a little bit. Um, okay, <laughs> not as smooth as I thought. Uh, there you go. And it just sort of creates the perfect little dot. So using all parts of the brush, I think um, I think it's her, but Christy Belcourt, um, you know, she does those massive, beautiful dot paintings. Um, I think she uses the back, like not the back of a Q-tip. She uses that Q-tip. I think is what maybe I'm imagining things, but I'm pretty sure I saw the YouTube video of that happening. So for those of you catching this video after uh, this session, um, everyone is looking really cute and very diligently at work painting their canvases and it's, it's nice to see. So one of the reasons why I got into painting in the first place was um, I just had a really great supportive art teacher in high school and just made me want to like pursue every every class and you know almost buying she'd let me you sign out art supplies to take home and uh, you know not every teacher is like that so she really kind of nourished my love for art and it was you know her that explained or that was able to like contextualize what I was looking at when I when I saw um, woodland artwork and um, just in case anyone's unaware um, uh, the way it was explained to me was imagining that you have like x-ray vision and you can like see into a creature or you know a, a tree or rock or whatever and you're what you're seeing um, when you're looking at the painting is like the the spirit or the life force of what it is you're looking at. And I was like, oh, okay, like that's why it looks, you know, has that many colors on it, or it looks, you know, kind of more like a more simplified version, or you can see their bone structure and stuff like that. So once I was able to kind of put those x ray glasses on, I was like, oh, okay, I get it. So with this sort of design, what we're doing is, uh, I think, where painting the spirit of, of eagle feathers kind of thing. So um, I really love when people just add color combinations that I wouldn't necessarily think of. And it's it's cool to see everyone kind of, because these are designs that I've done before, but, you know, getting to view them through other people's lenses too is so cool to see. Also, I've done so many of these classes, I'm becoming a pro at doing these upside down. Thank you. 
I'm debating on doing one of these for Halloween and dressing up as Bob Ross with like a big afro. Today we're painting happy pumpkins. I used to work at the gas station, um, Peros in Garden River, and he was like on the TV whenever my shift started. And it was, I loved working the gas station because like you got to meet everyone in town and got to, you know, get, catch the hot goss and see what was going on. Um, but also because I was like, this guy is so good at what he does. Um, I want to get that good. So hopefully, I mean, I'm, I'm cutting a few corners with the, the carbon paper, but I think for the most part, <laughs> everyone's following along pretty well. I don't see any tears yet. Oh, we have Sherry back. Hi. I think I think you're on mute still. This is my daughter Sarah. <laughs> she actually goes to OCAD for art. Oh wow, cool. Um, are you guys in Toronto right now? I I didn't catch that. Oakville. We're in oh, Oakville. Cool. So I needed a little assistance. Okay. Clearly Good. didn't get her talent from from me. <laughs> So we okay. I actually have um, some Muskoka chairs at the Oakville BIA at the waterfront. There's like, uh, I don't know. I don't know how many harbors or like, you know, piers there are there, but there's like a big pavilion or not a big one, a little one compared to the one in Sault Ste. Marie, but there's um, uh, Muskoka chairs that I, I did some artwork on if you want to go on an adventure and find those. We actually live right by there. I've oh, definitely cool. seen them, but now I need to like keep an eye out for it. Yeah, mine are more like, they, uh, I didn't paint a whole lot on them. I just sort of wood burned into the backs, like like where your back would go right. and painted a little bit. So it's subtle and it's I just stained it normally. I would love to learn how to wood burn. That's like something I've been really interested in trying. Pretty easy. Um, you definitely don't want to get like the little ones from Home Hardware or Home Depot. Like you want to get a good one because the ones from Home Hardware or Home Depot are kind of for kids. I find, but um, the one that I use, it, it looks like this. You can get them from Lee Valley. Okay. And it's, it seems intense, but it's just like, it's just like one switch and it's on. Like it, there's not much more to it than that. There's different pens you can get as well that have like different tips. Um, this one's a little bent because I was going hard on it, but um, yeah, kind of, I think you missed the beginning of this, but you can use transfer paper to transfer your design onto wood. And then you have like a stencil to follow with, with that's the way I do it anyway. Um, I've always because I've done like stamp making before you know when you like carve into rubber yeah like yeah totally is it similar to that um less less carvy more burny got it okay it makes sense <laughs> yeah a lot of fun and it makes your house smell good like smells like a campfire oh, that was fun Thank you for helping me. Um, anyone brave enough to show me how theirs is turning out so far? Oh, looking great. <laughs> oh, lovely. Yeah, slow and steady wins the race.
Oh, awesome. Is that purple or black? Cool. So as I was saying earlier, um, the first coat when you're painting with acrylics and you're kind of wanting it to be like um, opaque and like you want not to see through it, uh, the first coat's gonna look a little rough. Um, so don't get around that. Uh, but the second coat, everything kind of smooths out a lot more. Um, the paint looks a lot more even. And overall, I think it just is a better product. I expect, like when you're doing it with black too, black goes on quite easily. Um, uh, <laughs> I've been in one of my workshops I did yesterday, uh, there was a lady that was using like orange and like orange paint when you're trying to do thick solid lines like this it's unless you add like a bunch of white to it it takes forever it's gonna take like you know four or five coats to make sure that it's 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 nice and opaque but um she was happy with it in the end but you know i want everyone's to look I want them to be happy with it and how, have everyone's art piece look as good as it can. Um, so this one, this one's mine and I'm trying to see where there would be. So kind of like around here, you can kind of see it's like a little streaky and you can kind of see the background through the paint, um, maybe up there too. Um, one extra coat is just gonna cover that all up and just make it look a lot more clean. I think um, if you are, just a hot tip, if you're gonna be adding color like this one to, uh, to, your, um, to your feather, I think what you're gonna wanna do first, like do the color first and then do your second coat of black after, because you're gonna find that you kind of go outside the lines a little bit with your first, with the colors that you're using. And then when you go back over it with the black, it'll kind of hide a lot of the, the sketchy parts that kind of go outside the lines. <clears throat> if you just want your, your feather to be one color, by all means, just do that. It'll look great. I am gonna use a different color. Red. Um, uh, just to, you know, fill some silence here. Uh, <laughs> th these are the paints that I use, um, Golden. Um, it's just one of the many that I use as well. Uh, Liquitex is also a pretty good one. If yeah, you, I usually go with Liquitex. They're kind of like a great, almost higher end paint. Um, but then I, I also use stuff from Walmart too, like these little, uh, these little tubes, if I'm doing like a bigger background and just need to use up a lot of paint um, and I don't want to use the good stuff yet, um, I'll use these smaller ones to just kind of get some coverage down at least first and like say that these paintings weren't the size they were, they were like, you know, quadruple the size. That's when I would use some of the cheaper paints just to get, you know, a, a base down and then sort of come out, come on top with like a, a, a nicer um, brand of paint, but these ones are also not too bad either. Basics. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it's also Liquitex. Sorry, I thought it was called Basics. It's just anyway, Liquitex and Golden. Yeah, Liquitex is the best. I also like Golden. I don't know. I I, I find myself gearing more towards Liquitex, but these are nice. <laughs> Sorry. 
I'm just mixing some colors right now to put onto my, uh, in the little pockets that are open to the background. I'm gonna paint in, in the middles of those uh, just to add, you know, an extra little dimension to it. Um, you can add different colors to it if you want, but you, you can't go wrong either with like the colors that are already on your palette. Maybe add a little bit of white to them um, just to switch them up a little bit. Uh, and it'll look great. Um, some, I mean, sometimes you want to clean your brush off too if it gets a little clumpy at, at the bottom here. I just wipe mine off on my shirt because this is my painting shirt. But um, if you're kind of struggling with getting it on your fingers and stuff, you just it's just as easy just to start fresh, um, clean your brush off, and kind of remember the little technique we showed you earlier. You don't want to start painting with it all clumpy like that. You want to twist it off on the side to sharpen the brush and you're back in business. So also just to kind of uh, reiterate what I was or illustrate, I guess, what I, what I was telling you about earlier, you know how I was saying that if you start uh, painting the colors on, if you go outside the lines, that's okay because we're going to do a second coat of black over top and you'll it'll just clean up all of that kind of, it'll clean up the sides a little bit. So you don't have to be perfect at putting the, the paint into the pockets where there's it's open to the background. Um, you can it'll you'll cover it up after with uh, the black. I figured that out yesterday. <laughs> so I painted it twice and then I was like, damn it, I'm gonna have to do this a third time. I was just talking to myself. Gabby's, that's on the Danforth, isn't it? Uh, there, there's a couple Gabby's. There's oh, one, is there? Yeah, I was at the one uh, King and John. Um, kind okay. Of down by the uh, where the orchestra plays. Okay. 
Like or Thompson Hall. Yeah. 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 I live in Toronto. Oh, you do? Cool. Yeah. Just over here in Leslieville. Awesome. Yeah. Not to talk ill about Gabby's. The, the food's good. I just didn't. I It was hot in there. It was summer. It was like. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. No, no fans. But, um, uh, you know, it, it. I don't. I'm not mad about it. But I just need to be do, able to do this full time. So. Right, right. I did a short stint at uh, one of the local restaurants, Tea and Bannock. Have you heard of it? Oh, yeah, yeah. I used to have some artwork there. I'm not sure if it's still there. But, oh, yeah. really? Yeah. No, right? I don't know. So I haven't been there in a while, of course. So, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. They, he always had art hanging. Yeah. They have some prints of mine um, available for purchase there. But yeah, where I'm at right now in Toronto is uh, St. Clair and Bathurst area, um, kind of midtown, not bad. Like I don't feel super downtown, like it's right. in the backyard, I don't feel like that. One of my daughters lives in that area. Okay. Yeah. It was nice when I first moved to this area and it wasn't COVID because it was like, oh, it's a break from downtown at least. And then right. now that I've been here for a whole year, <laughs> like the the nature trail that I would go on every, I've been on every single day is getting a little old. And like, right. <laughs> I've lived here in the city for almost 50 years now. Wow. Oh, well, I'm really dating myself. <laughs> um, yeah, and like you said earlier, it's uh, even my husband agrees, you know, it's time to move on, get out of town. Yeah, closer to the lake. I'm getting a dog in yeah. so Start gonna... packing, Joanne. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Start packing. You mean start throwing things out? <laughs> yes. Well, that's true. Yes. I watched this show. Uh, oh, gosh. What is it now? I don't know. Tidying up. Like the joy of tidying up with like Marie Kondo, where she just kind of like, she goes to, like through your stuff like in phases where you have to like, okay, do clothes, put all your clothes on the table. And just like, you just see how disgusting you are. And like, I don't, not you personally, but like, I had like way too much. I wasn't even wearing any of it. And then you do paper, then you do all of your like kitchen stuff. And it's helpful just to kind of get rid of things that you don't need. You know what would be easier is you uh, buy another home. <laughs> <laughs> just transport everything over there. You need, you, to all actuality, you need to move every five years. So start purging. Every five years you purge. The longer you're in a place, the more junk you collect. <laughs> That's the key. You heard it here first. Yep. <laughs> Did I hear you say you're getting a dog? I'm getting, yeah, a little puppy in May. I'm oh, getting, yeah. yeah. I want to move by the end of the year. I start my G1 next month. I, I didn't know that I didn't want to live here the rest of my life. So I just let my license expire for so long. Um, but now that I want to leave, I'm getting this little cute. Um, uh, she's a gray lab. Oh, yeah. Great. That, oh, that's Look odd. Her. Look at her. Yeah, it is. I know when I saw it, I was like, I need to know the breeder. So um, uh, she's in her mom's belly right now. That's not actually her. That's like her older brother from the last litter. But um, yeah, I'm doing these little things so that I, by the time the the end of the year is here, I'm like, okay, it's time to go. What are you gonna name her? Cole. Nice. That's a great name. Cole, as in Cole. Yeah, like a piece <laughs> like of coal. Like black hole. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That's very pretty. So the 
the colors that you add to the inside of your um, uh, feather if you are doing that. Uh, those, I would suggest doing two coats of those as well. And then once that's done, it goes pretty quick. Um, once that's done, then you're just kind of going over all of the black one more time and it'll tidy up um, all of the lines and then you're finished. So that's that would kind of bring us to the end of our night together in about 15 minutes. For me anyway, you guys can continue painting on if you want. Patrick, can you put your painting a little bit closer so I can see how you're doing the inside? Yeah, it's looking a little rough right now, but you can kind of just, you can really just put it on there as quick as possible because the, the black paint is going to, it's going to clean everything up after. So you can kind of see it looks a little janky, like a little, like a little kid did it. <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm going to clean those lines up once I'm just finished putting on the second coat of all the colors. Oh, Patrick, before you. Oh, hold on. I think I. Um, Joanne, I think you got to unmute yourself. Okay. Hey. There. See, I'm trying to do the lettering okay. and it's all wobbly and wiggly. Any tips on how to do that straight? Sure. So uh, in your art kit, you might have gotten, you were, you were sent the one that Megan sent out, right? Right. So when it comes to doing like lettering and text and stuff like that, um, the easiest thing to do is just use like a flatter brush. Okay like that even if it hasn't I don't have an angled one in here for some reason oh I do oh maybe this one so it's on an angle like this where are you like yep. that okay you have, you have smaller but I think that might be a little better um just because it would be um I think the text I think it would be easier to do with smaller brush. Oh, okay I'll give it a shot but, um, okay. Using that brush, uh, where it actually is. So there's uh, a 
it's on an angle um, there's like a really flat part and you can kind of like just it can be like a really thin line if you want or you can kind of go wide with it and oh, okay so just use use the brush if it's like with text you want it to be this, this is like a very straight font so you can kind of just use the brush um i would sort of just kind of make little outlines of it first and then and fill it in okay so that's how you could do it or kind of on an angle just bring it up and and flat you'll have like a little you know it's like a, a little point at the end um mm -hmm. just fill that in after but utilizing the the angle of the brush to kind of like fill lots of the space okay doc perfect Thank you. You're welcome. I'll give it a try right now. Where's the card? Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so I did all of my colors and they look a little it looks a, like a little rough so I'm just going to go in with the black and clean those up a lot more and you'll get to see what I mean by that I'm going to move you a little closer and oh, it's an itchy ear <clears throat> Um, okay, where's the real hardcore ones? You can see like in this spot here, it's kind of really, I really went outside, out of the bounds. And with the black paint, because everything's nice and dry, you can just put it, paint right over the line. And it just brings everything back into focus, making it not so jagged. And kind of, as you can see, it's going on a lot easier than the first coat by doing the second coat of black. Um, that's because there's already like a road for the paint to follow. And you've already technically done that line before. So, um, you know, it's a little bit, the edges, the ice has been broken on it. So just kind of before I have to sign off with you all, is there any questions about um, any techniques or painting you want me to go over quickly? Um, I'm here for the next five, I believe. Oh, lovely. Yeah, so if you want, you could go over the black a little bit more and it would kind of tighten, make the, the color pop a little bit more, but if you like it as it is, that's great.
No, I need to go over the black. Yeah. yeah. I think it'll look awesome. And then, yeah, you got the right idea. You just want to sign your name on the bottom right, <laughs> this side, or initial and a little number. That's my, my initials. Awesome. You did great. And then also, uh, like I was saying earlier, if you did get, get a little bit of residue from the transfer paper on oh, your <laughs> you can wipe it off with a damp cloth and it'll it'll make it it'll make it go away. <laughs> Ooh, good job. Like peacock colors, I love that. And yeah, don't forget to go check out my my chairs. I think you can buy them. At, I think the show is done next month if you want some for your backyard. Well, we'll definitely walk over to look at them. See, you know, hopefully we'll be able to locate them without having to look to see where your name is. We'll be able to see it from your style. I think, yeah, I think you might be able to do that. But cool, yeah, keep me posted. My Instagram, if you have it, it's uh, patrickhunter underscore art. I'd like to see... You guys chilling out in the chairs if you want. Sure. Uh, my website as well, just to pitch it, uh, www.patrickhunter.ca. There's a little shop with mugs that I just loaded up on there, t-shirts, hoodies, um, face masks, all kinds of stuff. So um, if anyone wants, you can head over there uh, at, at your leisure, do a little shopping. And I think that's curtains for me, folks. Thank you very much for having me. I can't wait to hopefully do this in person with you at the, the next gathering, if we can do that this year. But if not, definitely next year. Count me in. Well, thank you so much. It was wonderful meeting you all. You too. Thank you. It's pretty cool. I'm excited. Bye, everyone. Bye. Do we have to hang up now or can we stay a couple more minutes? You can stay on. You don't have to hang up now. Natalie, are you there? Can you hear stay on? How long? Let's see your painting. I'm just doing the black. What? Wi Fi? Yes, Wi Fi. Oh, <laughs> that was John. He didn't. He thought that's how it was pronounced. He said, "Oh, what?"